In Creo Parametric, you have advanced orientation methods for controlling where and how the model is oriented in the graphics area. In this video, I'm going to go into the weeds. This is one of the few videos where I encourage you to watch to the end because I'm going to show a bunch of stuff you probably didn't know about. In the comments, I want to hear, did you know how to do all this stuff? If you did, I'm going to be impressed. If not, hey, tell me about it. So anyhow, let's go through the basics of manipulating a model in the graphics area. You probably know that if you hold down the middle mouse button, hey, you can spin the model. By the way, I have the spin center turned off. When the spin center is on, that is your center of spin. But when the spin center is off, you're going to spin about wherever your mouse is located. For the stuff that I'm going to show in this video, I recommend that you have the spin center turned off. For zooming in and zooming out, well, that's with the roller wheel. And if you want to pan the model on the computer screen, that is shift and the middle mouse button. But as you become more familiar with the mouse in Creo Parametric, you can probably get away without panning at all. You can just do it with combinations of where you're positioning your mouse when you are zooming in and zooming out. So you probably knew all of that stuff. Let's talk about a few things that you didn't know. Uh, let's see, if you hold down the control button and use the middle mouse button, that's how you can zoom in and zoom out if you don't have a roller wheel mouse. You probably knew that. But let's say that you hold down the control key and the middle mouse button and move your mouse left and right instead of up and down. That is called turning. So again, control plus middle mouse button. Sideways is spinning about an axis normal to the computer screen. The next thing, zooming in and zooming out with the roller wheel, you can control whether you're doing that in a coarse fashion or a fine fashion. So let me position my mouse right over the middle of the model. Right now, I'm just going to use the roller wheel. I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's about six and it gets really small. Let's say I want a more coarse zoom. If I hold down the control key when I do the middle mouse button, one, two, three, you can see that I'm zooming in much more or zooming out much less with fewer rolls of the middle mouse button. But let me get to it so it's about full screen here. If you use the shift key with the middle mouse button, you will get much finer zoom. So let me hold down the shift key, then I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, that was like nine and ten. When you're holding down the course button, it's like twice as much as normal. If you're holding down the shift key, it's like half as much as normal as just using the regular roller wheel mouse. All right, now we're going to go into something that's really obscure. This was introduced in Wildfire 1.0 back in 2003 and I remember by probably wildfire 5.0 we were no longer teaching it in the intro classes because it was just a little too overwhelming for new users it is something that is called orient mode and it's even been buried in the interface if you go to the view tab then go to the orientation overflow menu here is how you can get into orient mode and one thing to note about orient mode, when you go in there, you can see that the mouse pointer changed shape. Also, as I move my mouse over the model, we have no pre-selection highlighting. You can't even select things when you are in orient mode. Hey, this might be something that you want to use when you are doing a presentation, when you're using Creo Parametric. But anyhow, let's talk about the different things that you can do in orient mode. By the way, there is another way of getting into orient mode. Let me hold down the right mouse button to exit out of orient mode. The keyboard shortcut for getting into orient mode is the control key plus the shift key plus the middle mouse button. That will put you into orient mode. And if I go to the orientation overflow menu now, here we can change the orientation type. There are four different types, dynamic, anchored, delayed, and velocity. You can also change between the different types of orient mode by holding down the right mouse button. So the first choice here, the default choice, is dynamic. 
and dynamic is sort of just like regular orientation where you spin pan and zoom using the same controls but there are a couple other additional choices when you are in the dynamic mode and this can be kind of tough i mess this up all the time if you middle mouse click on an edge you can spin about that edge let me try it there i go i got it i got it the first time so now i'm spinning about that particular edge there let me try it with this edge over here again it's really tough for me to do with my middle mouse when oh there i got it here i have the edge selected so now i am spinning about that edge let me then rotate the model this time i'm going to try to double middle mouse click and hold on a flat planar surface let me try it oops missed it sometimes it takes me a few times to get this okay i think i got it now i'm spinning about an axis normal to that surface so again you can double middle mouse click on an edge to spin about that edge or double middle mouse click and hold on a surface to spin about an axis normal to that surface let's take a look at the next thing in orient mode if i hold down the right mouse button i can change to anchored spinning and now when i start my spin i'm going to start it right about over here you'll notice that i have my little triangle here it's a triangle and as i'm rotating it is green but it will sense when i get to about 90 degrees of rotation and it'll snap into that and it'll turn red so it'll give you indications of 90 degrees of rotation so let me get out over here a little bit and i should hit 180 up oh, there was about 180 rotation and then i can go about over more here's 270 and then it it's back to 360 but the other thing about anchored spinning is that if you line up the two triangles you will be back into your original orientation so again there's my initial place let me start over here this time and i can go and i can spin it all around and get all sorts of confused but if i line up the two triangles and they snap to red i'm back to the initial orientation let's take a look at the next one that we have in here which is the delayed mode and the delayed mode this again was added back in 2003 if you remember back then computers weren't so hot and so sometimes you would try to spin a really big assembly on the computer screen and you would get this chunky motion it would be slow it would be terrible trying to work in that way so maybe with a really big assembly back in the day you wanted to use delayed spinning which is okay i want to spin about uh yay this much you'll notice as i'm moving around first off i have the initial location is looking like a square my new location is also looking like a square but the model isn't actually rotating when i let go of the mouse then it'll update to that location so you can say oh, i want to spend about this much and then it'll update at the end so that is how you could use the anchored spinning let me go and bring this oops let me get out of anchored spinning because i can't tell where i am okay let me just reorient the model quickly the next one that you have in here is velocity and velocity is where you can sort of get a constant rotation spinning this around sort of like if it was on a turntable so let me grab the mouse and i'll start spinning and you'll notice that right now i have the start and the end location looking like two circles so depending on which mode that you're in in orient mode it changes the shape of the icons and you'll notice i'm holding my mouse in the same location and it's spinning as i move my mouse further away it's going to spin faster and faster and faster and it's like whoa look at that and let me bring it back in closer because i'm getting dizzy slowing it down slow 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 so that is the velocity spinning and if i hold down the right mouse button just want to point out that you have the ability to toggle the display of the spin center on and off from the right mouse button but here is where you can get out of orient mode i'm going to get back into orient mode in a second but i want to show you right now i have four choices let me exit out of orient mode if you go to perspective view and then go into orient mode and hold down the right mouse button now we have an additional option for 
fly through. And I'll admit, I am not that good at fly through. Here it tells me to select the eye target with the middle mouse button to initiate fly. I'm going to click on that eye target. Oops, let me bring it back in. I messed up. Again, I rarely ever use this stuff. Let me pan it back to the center. And so let me make sure that I am back in orient mode with perspective display turned on. And then let's go to fly through. And again, we can middle mouse click. And as I'm moving my mouse, we are starting to fly through the model. And like, oh, there we go. I just flew through it. So there you have an example of fly through mode. Let me then, I don't know, get out of this somehow and turn off my perspective view. Let's refit everything back to the computer screen. All right, so let's see what I want to show you for the last thing. Oh yeah, something that I use all the time that people might not be aware of. You can change the location of the spin center. And for some reason, I end up doing this a lot when I am in cabling. When I'm doing a lot of cabling mode, I need to change where I am in a big giant assembly. So if you go to the saved views list down here, we have the reorient command. And this is how you can set up your different saved views. But if you go to this type dropdown list, well, there's the ability to change to dynamic orient mode, but you can also choose preferences from the dropdown list. And this is where you can change the spin center. By default, it is in the model center. You can change it to the screen center. What I end up using a lot is a point or vertex. So if I want to spin about that location, let me select it and click the OK button. Oops, let me turn my spin center on. Hey, you can see where the spin center is now. So now I'll be rotating about that particular location in my model. Maybe for some other work that I'm doing, might be convenient to have the spin center in a different location. Again, we go to the saved views list. Let's go to reorient, change to preferences, and then I can pick a vertex in here. Let me see if I can get it. Ah, did I get it? Oh, I had the pick icon disabled. Now I can get a vertex in there and then click the OK button and I can spin my model around that particular location. And this is something that I do so often. I recommend that you maybe want to create a map key for it. If I go to my common tab, here I have my map keys command and here I have a map key for changing the spin center. I have the keyboard shortcut of CS and so that way, let's say I'm in some other tab, hey, I just use CS on the keyboard. Hey, then I can change to a particular vertex, close out of there, and now I'm spinning about that location. So there you have it. A lot of really obscure stuff about orienting the model in Creole Parametric. Again, I would love to hear in the comments if you knew about all this stuff or if you actually learned something in this video. Let me know.